Welcome to the first lesson in our third unit, and this is where we're starting to get into the meat and potatoes of what this course is all about, functions. Um, we're going to take what we learned from this unit, and it's going to extend into uh, most of the other units we're going to see in this course, uh, and then it's also going to extend to the advanced functions course that you will get into in grade 12. So it's really important that after we go over the definitions and new terms that you're going to hear in this lesson and the next lesson, uh, that you really understand what we mean. So take the time to pause the video, rewind the video, or do what you need to do to make sure you fully understand uh, what I'm talking about after I teach these lessons. Because you're going to need to know this stuff for not only this unit, but a few more units this year and most of the course in grade 12 functions. So what we're going to talk about today specifically are you know, what are functions? You've heard me use this word many times before, but what specifically are functions? Then we're going to get into some other terms like domain and range. You may have already heard of domain and range in your grade 10 course, but we'll explain them again in this lesson. So first, some quick definitions. We'll start with a word that's called a relation. So in mathematics, a relation is just a pattern between two variables that may be represented as ordered pairs, a table of values, a graph, or even an equation. We've seen many relations in your career as a math, as a math student. So for example, um, just even saying something like y equals x plus 3. This would be a relation. This is an equation that's relating the variable y to the variable x. Another relation you could see, oh, a table of values where x and y are here, and you have the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 0, and the y values are negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 7. Again, this is a relation between two variables, x and y. So we have dealt with many, many relations in this course and in previous courses. So what on earth is a function? Well, a function is actually a type of relation, a specific type, where each value of the independent variable, usually the x variable, corresponds to exactly one value of the dependent variable, which we normally refer to as the y variable. Now, after I just said that, and probably after you pause and maybe read that, that paragraph over and over again, it may still be a bit confusing. But let me try to explain a bit better. So a relation can be anything that compares two or more variables together. So it can be a table of values, it can be an equation, it could even be a graph. So, I don't know, let me just draw a graph here. And, I mean, this, if I label the axes x and y, this is a relationship between x and y. That curvy snake looking thing. Well, a function is a specific type of relation where each value of the independent variable which means that for any value of x, there's only one possible value that y could be. Let's take a little gander over at this graph that I just drew. I'm going to ask you to look at the graph and look to see where x equals 0. Well, we know that x equals 0 right on the y-axis, so right there. And if we look at the graph, the graph crosses the, the y-axis here in three different spots. One right here, one right here, and one right here. So by definition, a function is a type of relation where each value of the independent variable, or any x variable, corresponds to only one value of a dependent variable, which is y. Well, when x is 0 here, notice how there's three different possible y values. I don't know if we're estimating, maybe this is just slightly above zero. This could be four and this could be negative four. Well, this snake-like thing is not a function because for any given x variable, in this case zero, I have three possible values for what y could be, but a function can only have one. Let me see if I can draw a graph of something different that we could call a relation, or sorry, that we could call a function. All right, let's get another set of axes here, and let's see if I can draw you a type of function. 
So let's draw some x and y axes here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. X and y. And I'll just draw a neat little curve thingy that goes like this. Okay. <clears throat> so, by definition, a function is a type of relation where each value of the independent variable, or any x value, only corresponds to one y value. Well, let's pick some random x values here. Let's say, I don't know, let me put some grid lines on here too, so maybe we can see things easier. Just that sort of a guideline. Let's say we wanted to know when x is 2, what does y equal? Well, when x is 2, that's right here, well, the only part of this curve that where x is 2 is that point right there. There's only one possible solution for y. What about when x is, uh, I don't know, negative 1? Well, when x is negative 1, this is the only portion of the line that exists. So whatever that y value has to be, that's the only possible solution. What about when x is 0? Well, when x is 0, I only have one possible answer for where the y, what y could be. Notice how anywhere on this curve, there's only one possible solution for y for any given x that I name. This is a function. So, now that we know what a function is, comparison to a relation. And remember, a function is just a type of relation. This example that I did secondly, and the example that I did first, both of those are relations. They relate the variable x to the variable y. But only this one is a function. And just to be clear, anytime we have an x and y axis, remember the x-axis is the what we call the independent variable, and the y-axis is the dependent variable. If these axes change to different letters, so let's say I had a set of axes here, and this was time, and this was height, we see those things a lot. Again, the independent variable is always the horizontal axes right here, or in this case the t-axis, and the dependent variable is always the vertical axis, in this case the h-axis. So that has to be consistent any time we draw a graph. But no matter what, for any independent variable, or any value of the independent variable, there can only be one possible dependent variable, if it's going to be a function. Okay, so now that you know which or what a function is, look at these three tables of values and tell me which ones are functions. Okay, let's look at the first one. Notice I have the variables x and y in my table. The independent variable in this case is x and the dependent variable is y. So, by definition, a function is a relation in which for any given value of the independent variable, only one possible value exists for the dependent variable. Or if I were to say that again, for any given value of x, only one possible answer we could get for y. Well, if we look at this table, when x is 3, we know that y can only be 4. When x is 5, y can only be 3. When x is 7, y can only be 2. Hmm, we get into an interesting situation here. When x is 9, y is 3 y was 3 when x was 5. So does this mean that this isn't a function? Actually, that has nothing to do with whether or not it's a function. All I care about is if any, for any given x value, there can only be one given y value. So I only have uh, a 3, a 5, a 7, a 9, an 11, and a 13, and each of those have one answer for what y could be. So this is a function, yes. All right, what about the second one? Again, we're looking to see if for any given x value, is there only one possible y value? Well, looking down my list, I notice that I, the, there are two values of x that are repeated. I have x equals negative 2 right here, and I have x equals negative 2 right here. Well, that's fair. The number is allowed to be repeated in the table, but what we're looking for is, are the values of y the same for x equals negative 2. Well, for here when x is negative 2, y is 1, but for here when x is negative 2, y is 5. That can't be possible in a function. 
because in a function, for any given x value, there can only be one possible y value. Now, that in this case, there's two, a 1 and a 5. So this cannot be a function, not a function. We use this little shorthand for function, f with a little line, or sorry, f to the n, not to the, but f and then a little n with a little line. Not a function. All right, what about number three? Interesting situation here. All the number y is always 2. Hmm, seems odd, but let's make sure we remember our rule. For any given x value, there can only be one possible y value. Well, looking down my list, I have the number 5, or negative 5, sorry, repeated again with the number negative 5. Like before, that's okay, as long as the y values for each of those negative 5s are the same. Well, this y value is 2, and this y value is 2. So, that checks out. That's okay. We can still be a function. Hmm. What about the fact that I have 1 and 1? Again, it's okay as long as the y value for each of those is the same. In this case, it's 2. In this case, it's 2. So my rule checks out. For any given x value, there's only one possible y value that exists. So this is a function. Yes. We just looked at some tables, but what if we're given a graph? Can you look at these four graphs and determine which of these are functions? If you were to look at these and see, hmm, how on earth could you determine whether or not these are functions or not? I guess you could try what I tried on the first slide, where I just drew a random graph and I picked some random points for x. So if you said that the, this line was a function, you'd be correct. This is a function. Notice how for any given x value, no matter what I pick, it's only going to hit the y value once. So if x was, I don't know, right here, hits the y value right here. If x was right here, well, that only hits the y value right there. Or, I mean, there's only one y value right at that point. There aren't two points on the function that lie when x is that number. So this one is a function. What about the circle? Is the circle a function? Well, I mean, classic example here is, what if x is 0? Well, when x is 0, I have a point that hits right there and a point that hits right here. This y value is not the same as this y value. So this is not a function. Now that we've seen these two examples, I mean, is there an easier way to just come up with whether or not something is a function or not? There has to be some sort of test or some visual clue that can let us know whether or not a graph is a function. Because just looking at these two shapes, one of these is a parabola, this one. This one, remember, is not a parabola. A parabola can never be sideways. It can only be facing up or down. One of these two is a function, but one of them isn't. Do you know which one? If you said the first one is a function, you'd be right. This one for sure is a function. No matter what x value you pick, there's only going to be one possible y value. This one isn't. If I pick an x value right here, I have a point here and a point here. That would give me two different y values, not a function. So what's something that I could use as a test to sort of just look at a graph and see, is it a function or not? Well, we've come up with this very scientific, very difficult test. When looking at relations on a graph, it's easy to see if the relation is a function by using something that we call the vertical line test. Yes, it's a really difficult test. All you do is you see that if you can draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph, and it touches the graph in more than one spot, this is not a function. That means there's going to be two y values for that given x value that that, that vertical line passes through. So looking back on these functions up here, we can do a vertical line test for these two. So if I drew a vertical line anywhere on this line, Notice how it only passes or touches one time, right there and right there. Whereas a circle, I can draw a vertical line pretty much anywhere, and it's going to hit twice, one right here and one right here. Same thing for this parabola. Any anywhere I put a vertical line, 
it's only going to touch the parabola in one spot. But for this sideways shape, anywhere I put a vertical line, it'll touch in two spots. Now, I know that over here, if I drew a vertical line, it would only touch the parabola right, or sorry, this isn't a parabola, but it would only touch the sideways shape once. But it's still not a function because there is a spot, or in this case many spots, where putting a vertical line, it does touch more than once. So this does not pass the vertical line test.